The semi-empirical mass formula is based on the liquid drop model, which describes the nucleus as a homogeneous round droplet. The semi-empirical mass formula models the binding energy as the sum of five terms. Here, we show the effect of each of these terms as a function of the number of neutrons, n, and protons, z. The sum of neutrons and protons gives the total number, a, of nuclides of the element, which is proportional to the volume of the nucleus. The semi-empirical mass formula can be visualized as a three-dimensional plot, where the height corresponds to the binding energy per nucleon. Volume term. It is the nuclear force which is responsible for the binding between nuclides. The nuclear force is very strong. However, it has only a short range. Therefore, the binding energy per nucleon within the volume is constant, as it only depends on the number of nearest neighbors. Surface term. The surface term is a correction to the volume term, since nuclides on the surface have fewer nearest neighbors to interact with. Due to the larger surface-to-volume ratio, this effect is bigger for smaller nuclides. Coulomb term. The binding energy per nucleon is reduced by the repulsive electric Coulomb force between protons. In contrast to the nuclear force, the Coulomb force is not a short-range force. Thus, all Z protons repel from the Z-1 remaining protons, making the force quadratic in Z. Therefore, the Coulomb repulsion is much larger for nuclides with a larger number Z of protons. Asymmetry term. Due to the Pauli exclusion principle, each energy level can be occupied only once. An unequal number of protons and neutrons implies an asymmetry in the filling of energy levels for neutrons and protons. Thus, the binding becomes weaker if energy must be invested in the filling of higher energy levels, as neutrons cannot occupy the lower energy levels of protons, and vice versa. Pairing term. Both protons and neutrons have spin one-half. For an even number of protons and neutrons, due to the spin coupling, the nucleus becomes slightly more stable. If both numbers are odd, the uncoupled spins remove binding energy. The nucleus becomes slightly more unstable in this case. For one odd and one even number of spins of the protons and neutrons, the effects compensate each other. binding energy per nucleon. These five contributions lead to a three-dimensional visualization of the binding energy per nucleon, according to the semi-empirical mass formula. Iron is the most stable element, where neither fusion nor fission leads to a gain of energy.
Experimental data. The experimental data for the binding energy per nucleon as a function of the number n of neutrons and z of protons in the nucleus can be visualized in a similar way in order to compare to the predictions of the model. By subtracting the theoretical binding energies per nucleon from the experimental data, we obtain a visual impression of the validity of the liquid drop model. If the semi-empirical mass formula fits well with the experiment, this difference should vanish. Magic numbers. Looking at the difference between the semi-empirical mass formula and experimental data, the so-called magic numbers 2, 8, 20, 28, 50, 82, and 126 are of particular interest. If both Z and N are magic, the nucleus is called doubly magic, and the nucleus is particularly stable. Magic lines connect these doubly magic nuclei, where either the number of neutrons or of protons is a magic number. Blue stands for positive deviations, where the binding is stronger than predicted by the semi-empirical mass formula. Orange stands for negative deviations, where the binding is weaker. The difference between theory and experiment is large for very small nuclei, since the surface-to-volume relation is too large, and the liquid drop model breaks down. The difference is minimal for so-called doubly magic nuclei, where N and Z are magic numbers. Even the magic lines can be seen in this difference plot, comparing theory and experiment. This suggests that such nuclei are particularly homogeneous and spherical in shape, in accordance with the liquid drop model. It is fascinating to see that such a simple model as the liquid drop model is well able to describe many important features of atomic nuclei, such as radioactive decay series, nuclear fusion, and fission.